welcome back to my channel and in this video we are going to discuss about three basic concepts in shoulder complex biomechanics that is about the coracoacromial arch the bursas around the shoulder joint or the glenohumeral joint and finally about the subacromial space in detail first of all i want to apologize uh, for the delay that happened in uploading the video i was a bit engaged with uh, arranging the mcq question today onwards we will have a regular video throughout this week and next video would be on the wrist complex biomechanics on tomorrow at the same time right now let us discuss about the coracoacromial arch the bursa around the shoulder joint and the subacromial space in detail. Uh, the word, the coracoacromial arch, as I told you always, try to find out the explanation of the words so in biomechanics and anatomy when you are learning so when you are when we discuss the term coracoacromic arch we have few, few terms over here one is the coracoid so it would have the coracoid process right the coracoid process the next term we here is the acromion yes it has the acromion process yes uh, the acromion process then coracoacromial, there is a ligament known as a coracoacromial ligament, coracoacromial ligament and there is a joint in the acromion process which is formed by the clavicle which is the acromioclavicular joint, acromioclavicular joint. So these are the few terms that you need to remember to understand this concept of coracoacromial arch. So it involves, it's a structure formed by the coracoid process, the acromion process, not the entire acromion process, of course the undersurface of acromion process, undersurface of acromion process, then the coracoacromial ligament, coracoacromial ligament, and the in, inner aspect of inferior aspect of the acromioclavicular. So when we look at this term, we see that uh, uh, here we have a bone over here. Here is the bone. Here is the bone. But this is not a bone. It's a ligament. So we call this coracoacromial arch by a term osteoligamentous. Okay. So the coracoacromial arch is an osteoligamentous arch which is formed by the coracoid process the acromion process of course the undersurface of the acromion process the coracoacromial ligament the acromioclavicular joint inner surface so this is an osteoligamentous vault we call it like a vault vault means a covering or you can simply tell it is an osteoligamentous arch which is formed by the coracoid process acromion coracoacromion and acromion why osteoligamentous means because it contains both the bone as well as the ligaments but why do we need a structure like that why do we need a coracoacromial arch and where is it exactly located you know this is the coracoid process right this is the acromion process so coracoid process acromion process coracoacromial ligament and acromioclavicular joint acromioclavicular joint would be here so this is the space where we have this coracoacromial arch and a ligament which connects the coracoid process to the acromion process like this is known as the coracoacromial ligament so this is what this my finger my finger shows that this is the coracoacromial arch a structure which is formed by coracoid process here the coracoacromial ligament over here the acromion process and the inner aspect of inner surface of acromioclavicular joint so this is the structure which is formed or which is known as the coracoacromial arch right now Im imagine the situation this arch is not here okay actually why do we need an arch because this arch is not going to increase the stability of uh, which one the clavic scapula because it's just attaching scapula to the scapula different parts of the scapula so it's not going to increase the stability then why do we need the arch 
For example, when you carry some load in your shoulder, for example, you are cleaning your room and you need to rearrange your bookshelf. So you carry some of your books in your shoulder. You just imagine a situation over here. If there is no arch at this place, okay? If there is no arch over this place, through the, uh, the space that is below the coracoacromial arch, we have structures like uh, the supraspinatus or the rotator cuff muscle tendons. We have a bursa known as subacromial bursa. We have the long head of biceps brachii. So when you're carrying some load, for example, this is a load, you're carrying a load and this arch is yeah. not. So what happens when you carry a load, it can get impacted on the very delicate tendons and bursas at that region so it may produce tendonitis or bursitis or other associated problems so in order to prevent that this coracoacromial arch is seen so that it protects the structures which are passing below from direct trauma so when you're carrying a book a heavy book or a load in your shoulder the direct trauma is not passed through or not uh, get it won't get acted on the supraspinal tendon rotator cuff tendons or biceps brachii or the subacromial bursa so that is one of the main peculiar function of a coracoacromial arch at the same time you know that this is a humeral head okay the if there is an arch over here like this, hmm, the humeral head cannot translate or get displaced superiorly. So superior dislocation or superior translation of the humeral head is also prevented. So this arch-like structure will stop the humeral head from getting displaced superiorly. So those are the two major reasons why do we have a coracoacromial arch or, or the, these are the two reasons or two functions of the coracoacromial arch. So this is a very simple concept that is the coracoacromial arch is an arch which is in fact an osteoligamentous one formed by coracoid process, acromion process, coracoacromial ligament and acromioclavicular joint. All the structures you can just take out from this name. So even if you forget one, just correlate this one and you get it. Okay, what are the two functions? It prevents uh, the structures passing below it from direct trauma when we apply or when we carry some load on the shoulder, etc. So then comes the question, which are the structures that passes beneath? The structures would include the rotator cuff tendons. You know, what are the rotator cuff muscles? Or if not, we'll discuss that later. The rotator cuff tendons, the long head of biceps brachii and subacromial bursa. And the second function is that it prevents a superior translation of the humeral head so that the superior dislocation of the humeral head is being prevented. Clear? So now let us proceed on to the second topic of this region that is the bursas around the shoulder region. In fact, you know what is bursa, you know what is the function of the bursa and there are a lot of uh, ligaments, there are a lot, a lot of bony connections, there are a lot of functions and mobility that is happening in the shoulder region. So there are a lot of bursas in shoulder regions, but of course we need to just specify on two bursa in shoulder region, which include subacromial bursa. What is that? The subacromial bursa and second one is known as subdeltoid bursa. Subdeltoid bursa. Something that I missed to uh, inform or just uh, something that I missed off when I discussed about when we discussed about the coracoacromial arch is that the space that is seen just below the coracoacromial arch and the humeral head is known as the subacromial space. Of course, when we studied, when we learned, when we explored this chapter, shoulder complex at first, we considered subacromial space as a joint itself. So some studies do take it as a joint, but for our convenience, we take it as a space. So what is subacromial space? It's a space that is existing between the coracoacromial arch at the top and the humeral head in the lower region. So that is the subacromial burst. Uh, space. Now, what is subacromial bursa? Subacromial bursa is the bursa that exists in the subacromial space and subdeltoid bursa is seen just below the deltoid muscle. Of course, these are two separate bursas. This is one and this is two. But what happens is that usually both of them are seen associated with each other. And we call together them as the subacromial bursa itself. Subacromial bursa. What is that? 
the subacromial bursa and subdeltoid bursa are in fact two entities but sometimes or mostly they are seen associated with each other where we call them as a sub acromial bursa itself so we have the acromion process over here and we have a coracoid process over here right and then we have the uh, what is that coraco acromial arch over here right and this is the other structures and of course here we have the humeral head here we have the humeral head glenoid fossa etc now there is the deltoid muscle which is seen over here immediately below that muscle you have the bursa known as subdeltoid bursa in the subacromial space you have the subacromial bursa so what happens is that usually these two bursas are seen associated with each other, continuous with each other, and we call them together as a subacromial bursa. Something that you should note that in normal routine examinations or normal cases, this is bursas are very um, minimal in size because they have very little amount of fluid between them. But when there is an inflammation of the tendons or ligaments or associated structures at that region, what happens is that this bursa gets inflamed and get enlarged. So subacromial bursa may be uh, visible very clearly in routine examinations when there is some sort of inflammation to subacromial space or the supraspinal distension or the rotator cuff tendons, etc. So normally these bursas are seen continuous with each other and we call them together as a subacromial bursa and they are very minimal small fluid spills facets of the fascia itself but when there is some sort of inflammation those bursas get inflamed and they get enlarged in size and they become clinically relevant right so one of the muscles that gets almost time impinged with the coracoacromial arch is the supraspinous dust muscle and of course supraspinous dust tendonitis can result in subacromial bursitis or subacromial bursa expansion in normal cases of course the other rotator cuff muscles also can produce the same consideration now from this subacromial space we move on to bursa we move on to subacromial space okay the third concept in this region is the subacromial space in fact you should understand that all this concept are interrelated to each other in the coracoacromial arch we have the subacromial square bursa and in the subacromial uh, coracoacromial arch itself we have the subacromial space so we study about uh, subacromial space what is that subacromial space okay this is a space not bursa subacromial space so this is a space that exists between coracoacromial arch and the humeral head over here okay so this is the humeral head you imagine this is the humeral head and this is the uh, coracoacromial arch this potential space that is existing between the coracoacromial arch and the humeral head is known as the subacromial space okay it's a potential space that is existing between below the coracoacromial arch and above the supra uh, humerus so we call it as a suprahumeral space what is that we can call it as the suprahumeral space okay we call it as a suprahumeral space in fact some studies as i told you earlier consider this even as a functional joint like a scapulothoracic joint but we consider here it as a space itself subacromial space or suprahumeral space why suprahumeral because it's above the humerus itself right yes and now um, when the arm is at side that is this adducted position we examine when we examine okay when we examine we find out that uh, the subacromial space is about 10 millimeter in size okay when arm gets elevated it decreases to 5 millimeter so when the arm is at side adducted zero degree we have the maximum space of a 10 degree whereas when arm gets elevated uh, it gets in decreased by to 5 centimeter okay when there is a maximum elevation it can decrease up to 5 centimeter so usually what happens is that there are a lot of structures which actually passes through this region which includes the supraspinatus other rotator cuff muscles the subarcromial space then sorry the bursa then the long hip of vices brachii etc so when the space is going to decrease what is what should happen actually the structures should get compressed right so we have a potential space like this when arm is elevated the space is getting decreased like this so this should compress the 
contents which are passing to that region right they should compress the contents that are passing to that region but now latest study shows that uh, even though the space gets decreased by uh, 5 millimeter when arm is getting elevated the maximum impingement what do you call my impingement the contents of this region can get compressed between the coracoconic arms the bony prominence over there that contact is known as the impingement okay that impingement occur mostly in the initial ranges of abduction initial ranges of flexion or initial ranges of elevation why that is because one of the most impinged structure is the supraspinatus. So what happens is that when arm is elevated to 90 degree, the supraspinatus muscle tendon gets slightly medially rotated. So gets slightly rotated so that it moves from that bony prominence of the coracoid process or the acromion process. So that there is no problem of impingement. So this is some contradictory ideas like uh, the space is actually decreasing when elevation is increasing so it should compress the structures itself but we see that uh, the impact on that structure or the impingement of that structure can occur even at the early stages i don't say that it cannot occur at the 90 degree but it can occur at the early stages why that is because at a particular range for example 90 degree of elevation the supraspinatus muscle gets just immediately rotated so that what happens is that no longer rest in between the bony prominence so if it is not between the bony prominence can it cause impingement of course no so that is the change that is happening when uh, subacromial space increases and uh, decreases so what is subacromial space or supraglomerular space it's a space that exists between what is that the coracoacromial arch and the humerus head of the humerus this is a potential space and the space is known as also known as suprahumeral space and the space contains components like uh, what is that the tendons of the rotator cuff muscles the bursa of the muscles the long head of biceps brachii etc so usually arm at the side we have adducted arm at the side zero degree 10 millimeter is the size of the space whereas it decreases to five millimeter up to five millimeter when arm is going to be elevated but when arm is elevated the chance of compression or the impingement of supraspinatus tendon why we call it supraspinatus because it's more superficial one and it's mostly impinged one um, decreases that is because at about 90 degree of flexion or elevation okay elevation means abduction plus flexion the um, tendon actually gets immediately rotated so that it no longer rests between this body prominence and as a result what happens over here is that uh, the impingement chances get decreased now to summarize we need to know that at the early stages of this arm flexion or elevation there are chances when that normal space gets decreased can you tell me what would be the reasons why that normal space is going to decrease because you know that the space is actually dependent on a lot of substance lot of components over this here lot of bones over here so if there is any slight abnormalities for example change in orientation of this coracoid process acromion process the glenoid force or orientation changes if there is a excessively large humeral head if there is this coracoacromial ligament is very heavy or is larger if there is some bone spurs in between the acromion process or acromial clavicular osteophytes are developed any of that things or there is changes in the orientation or rotation of the scapula all these structures can decrease ultimately this coracoacromial space so in normal range the coracoacromial space can decrease due to various factors which includes the changes in the coracoid process acromion process the orientation of the glenoid fossa changes the acromial clavicular osteophytes the abnormally large humeral head or change in orientation of the scapula decrease in rotation of the scapula various other factors or coracoacromial ligaments becomes uh, larger or there is bursitis subacromial bursa or subdeltoid bursa so all this time at the, all these cases 
the space can decrease so what happens if the space decrease all that structure will get impinged in the arm movement so it can cause a lot amount of pain when we do the arm movement repeated 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 injury or inflammation can result in the bursitis uh, degeneration of the tendons of the rotator cuff and ultimately muscle weakness and muscle wasteness or even muscular atrophy in that region so that all uh, been con uh, dealt with the term known as impingement syndrome okay which is beyond the scope of our discussion right now when we are doing the clinicals we might uh, discuss that in the future so just remember that the subacromial space or suprahumeral space can decrease even in the normal persons so if that decrease is less than the five centimeter five millimeter due to various reasons it can cause the impingement of the structures and when the impingement of the structures in congruence it can result in pain decrease range of motion muscle guarding as passive some bursitis etc and ultimately it may lead on to atrophy of the muscle weakness of the muscle muscular wasting increased fibrosis of the muscles etc so what is the nutshell of this discussion the nutshell of this discussion is that to protect our delicate structures which are seen in this region we have a coracoacromial arch that is actually a positive one doing a positive function over there function of protection, function of preventing superior humeral translation. And there are a lot of bursa, so namely subacromial bursa, subdeltoid bursa, which are functioning to reduce the friction between all these tendons because you have supraspinatus, you have subscapularis, you have infraspinatus, steris major, biceps brachii, etc. Different tendons, different bones. So to prevent that uh, uh, friction between them, we have bursas. Normally that bursas are silent, but in clinical conditions in which there is an inflammation, they may become enlarged. And this potential space, which is uh, seen below the arch, is known as subacromial space or suprahumeral space, which function to allow the substance to pass through them, different structures to pass through them. But there are some scenarios in which the space can decrease and can they, they can precipitate problems more than advantages. So the arch which was advantage become a problem when uh, we have the space decrease, we have increased pain, we have difficulty in doing the normal range of motion, muscular wasting, etc. Okay, I hope that is clear. So in the next video in shoulder complex, we have the function in the shoulder complex, glenohumeral joint, flexion, extension, adduction, internal and external rotation, as well as an awaited one known as the intra-articular motion. How osteo and arthrochiromatics are going to help in the glenohumeral joint. Until then, stay tuned. And if you like the video, don't forget to click the like button and kindly subscribe to our channel.